Hello and welcome back. In this exercise we're going to produce a couple of tables uh, summarizing multiple variables. So this is a cross tabulation of two variables. Uh, what I've got here is I, I just put together a fictional uh, data set of uh, various salaries uh, by profession, uh, also dependent on experience level. So what, uh, what a cross tabulation is, is, is really a, it's a table uh, and it's a table that summarizes data as it spreads across, uh, in this case, two variables. So I've, uh, I've gone ahead and produced the, the table that we're going to fill in. Uh, and I just want to point out a couple of uh, features of this table, or a couple of important, important aspects of this table uh, that I don't want uh, you to overlook when you're, when you're producing one on your own. So, here we've got uh, two different variables. I'm plotting uh, salary and I'm, and I'm looking at profession. Now the nature of this data, um, I have here uh, categorical information and I have here, uh, this is uh, numerical or quantitative information. So I want, I, I want to point out that for cross tabulations, the nature of the data doesn't really matter. We can use either uh, ordinal data, nominal data, or uh, either ratio or interval data. So, and, and we can blend them, right? It doesn't have to be you know, both variables being either one or, or the other. So we can have different types of data. Uh, because I have uh, one of my variables here is a ratio variable, it's, it's quantitative, I've defined some classes so I did this by looking at the data set and identifying my largest and my smallest observation, which here uh, my smallest observation was 29,000, my largest observation was 96,000. So I wanted to make sure that I had uh, sufficient values in my classes to cover that range from 29 to 96. I kind of rounded it down and up to 20,000 as my absolute lowest value here and 100 as my absolute uh, highest value here. So, and I, I said, well, uh, let's keep it simple. Let's just have four classes. So if I have a, a range, this is a range here from 100 to 20. So 100 minus 20, my, my largest value, my smallest value divided by, I wanted to have four classes. So that gives me uh, four in my denominator. And so that means that each one of my classes is going to be roughly uh, a, a distance of 20. Uh, so here, and I've rounded it a bit, nothing here has to be absolutely precise at this stage, right? So here I have uh, 20 to 39. So actually this is 19, 19. And then it's the very last one is uh, or a distance or an interval of 20. Okay, so producing, producing those classes not not a science doesn't have to be precise decide on a reasonable number of classes uh, to use and then use your smallest and your largest data point uh, in order to calculate the width of each of your respective classes okay now something else that i don't want to be overlooked is that in here i've stated specifically the the units of measure so th these classes this isn't just 20 to 39, 20 to 39 dollars, this is in thousands of dollars, so this is 20,000 to 39,000. Okay, so these are just, these are important details uh, that can be easily overlooked, uh, but uh, if you're producing a table from scratch, you need to make sure to include uh, each of these different characteristics. Okay, so as far as it goes uh, for filling in the table, uh, we can go through this well, one one profession at a time. So let's let's start with uh, the economists. And all we need to do here, it's very similar to when we were producing a, a histogram, uh, if you recall, where we have our different classes, and and now we're we're counting the frequency or the number of observations uh, that fall within each of those classes uh, for each of our professions. So it's, it's almost like we're producing four histograms here. We start with economists, so I'm only going to look at this first uh, sec uh, set of, of data points. And now I count how many observations fall into 
each of these classes. So within that group of uh, economist salaries, how many are earning between 20 and 39,000? Uh, here I have this one here, uh, and I think that's it. So I have one economist there, 40 to 59,000. One, two, three, four, 60 to 79, there's one, two, three, and finally 80 to 100, there's one. And then we add these up and I have a total of nine observations. Okay, and then we, we go through this for each of, our, each of our professions. So now we'll look at accountants, so I'm only gonna look at this uh, set of data points, 20 to 39, I have here just the one, 40 to 59, one, two, three, 60 to 79, it uh, looks like that's the rest of them. One, two, three, four, and five. And then zero and nine observations in total. Let's, uh, let's finish up. Engineer. Uh, the low paid engineers, I don't think there's many of those. Zero, 40 to 59 range. One, two, three, three of those. 60 to 79. One, two, three, four. 80 to 100, here I have two. Once again, we have nine observations. And last but not least, those physicists, 20 to 39, one, two, 40 to 59, one, two, three, four, and the 60 to 79, looks like the last three, and then making over 80. And so there's our total nine uh, observations again. And so now we have uh, our frequency of, of observations by profession across each of these different income groups. And then here, uh, these are what we call those row totals. And then I can add that up at the bottom. Uh, let me get another color here. Be 36 would be our, our grand total. So that's our total number of observations. And then if we wanted to get here, and we're gonna need these, our column totals will go here. So this would be then how many observations in each of those uh, income brackets, each of those classes. So here I have uh, four, seven, 14, five, eight, and seven is 15, and three, and hopefully that'll add again to 36. Okay, so here, oh, I just noticed I lost a word. These are column totals. So here we have our completed uh, table that summarizes the, uh, our data set across these two variables, uh, profession and salary. And so really it's a table of, uh, of frequencies. We're counting how many observations fall into each of these uh, cells. So I have, uh, let's just pick one at random here. I have uh, three economists earning between 60 and 79,000. I have four physicists earning between 40 and 59,000. Okay, so this is just a count of the number of observations that fall into uh, these various categories. Okay, so the next part of this question B, uh, we're gonna calculate row and column percentages for this uh, for this table, so I've already duplicated in uh, in an attempt to keep these videos uh, as short as possible. I've already duplicated here uh, our our table that we've just produced with all of the answers in it, and uh, now we're just going to go ahead and and fill in this table once again for the row and the column percentages. Now I'm not going to do the entire table because uh, it can be quite time consuming. So I just want to give you. Uh, an example of, of how this is done. So let's start with uh, our row our row percentages first. Okay, so the row percentage, uh, what we're going to be looking at now is, is individual cells divided by the total number of observations in that row. So this is why we need to calculate these row totals because those are gonna be the denominator uh, in each of these calculations that we're going to produce. I might just pull up a calculator here as I suspect I may need one. 
Okay. So what we're going to do, this first observation, so with the 1 divided by the 9, uh, this is going to go here, 1 over 9 equals 0 0.11. Okay, that'll make it easy. So 1 divided by 9, uh, let's times it by 100 so that we can work with percentages, uh, and so this is going to be 11%. So that's my first percentage here, 11%. So what this means is that within my sample, within my data set, 11% uh, of economists are earning between 20 and $39,000. Okay, if we move on, so this next one is four divided by nine again, times 100. This is going to be 44%. And let me just quickly fill in, so then I'll do 3 and 1, always with 9 in the denominator. So that'll be 33% and 11%. Uh, and the total, of course, is going to be 100%, simply indicating, you know, this is going to be 9 divided by 9. 100% of my economists in this data set are earning some amount between 20 and $100,000. Uh, so they're 100% of the economists in this data set are in this data set. It doesn't have a really useful interpretation, uh, but that's what it is. So now we can uh, we can look at any one of these values. Now it could be, I'm not gonna, like I said, I'm not going to fill it in for the entire table. It'd be too much work, too much time. Uh, but I can just pick a number and say, okay, of the economists in this data set, 33% of them are are earning between sixty and seventy nine thousand dollars and then of course we could do that for each of these other observations uh, each of these other professions now I'm going to also go through and uh, and do the totals because that might be interesting as well so if I look at, at our, our totals here so this will be four and now we're going to use as our denominator always this row the corresponding row total. So this is going to be 4 divided by 36. So if I have 4 over 36 times 100, that's going to be uh, 4 divided by 36, so 11. And we'll keep that as a percentage, so 11%. Okay, and let's, uh, let's just continue on. So the next one, that'll be 14 divided by 36, 39, 39 percent. So that was this 14 divided by 36 times 100. That was the 39 percent. And then the next one I'll do here is this 15 divided by, well that's going to be, let's see, 15 divided by 36, 40, call that 42 percent. And this one's going to be 3, 3. so call that 8 percent. I'm just rounding everything here. 8 percent, and this will be always 100 percent in the totals. Okay, so uh, what do these values mean then? Well, Let's just pick one. Uh, let's pick this one here. So now these are these are totals across professions. So what this means now is that regardless of profession, ignoring profession, within this data set, 39% uh, of individuals are earning, in this case, between 40 and 59 thousand dollars. Uh, for example, here, eight percent of professionals in this data set are earning between eighty and a hundred thousand dollars. So notice there's no mention of profession, right? Here, I have eleven percent of economists are earning between eighty and a hundred thousand dollars, whereas this eight is eight percent of everybody is earning between uh, eighty and one hundred thousand dollars. Okay, so that gives us. Uh, our row percentages. 
Okay, now I'm going to uh, erase everything here. So if you um, if that's all you needed, uh, copy down what you need. I'm going to erase everything and and go into column percentages. Now it's it's a very similar process. Uh, the interpretation, you know, the the nature of the data that it gives us is a little bit different, uh, and serves a, a different use. So now we're going to do our column percentages. So these will be our columns. I just noticed something that I should have mentioned at the very beginning of this video, but I'm too far in. <laughs> I don't want to start the video again. Uh, I really should have e erased this. It says thousands of dollars. This no longer applies uh, because now we're looking, we're working in percentages, right? So I really should have changed that. Uh, but uh, they're better, better late than never, because we're no longer in thousands of dollars anymore. Okay, so moving on for our column percentages. So now we're going to go down and and do these calculations down individual columns instead of individual rows. And so now what we are going to use as our denominator uh, are these column totals, not the row totals. Okay, so again for this first observation, so if I'm looking uh, here, this one economist are making twenty to between twenty and thirty nine thousand out of a total of four individuals in that income bracket. Okay, so now we're ignoring profession, and now I'm looking at uh, sorry, and only in my denominator are, are we ignoring profession. So here I have. Uh, 25%. So within that income group, within that, that bracket of twenty to thirty-nine thousand dollars, twenty-five percent of those are economists. Similarly for the accountants, again it's one. So these these are both one divided by four times one hundred are giving us these twenty-five percent. So this is also twenty-five percent. So again, within that income group, between 20 and 39,000, 25% of those uh, in my sample are accountants. Uh, engineers, zero. Okay, there, there are none. No engineers in that income bracket. Physicists, there's two out of those four. So two out of those four, this is going to give us 50%. So again, within that income group, 50% are physicists. And then finally we have our total at 100%. Doesn't have a very interesting interpretation. 100% uh, of the observations within that uh, income group have some profession, uh, either an economist, accountant, engineer, or physicist. It doesn't really have uh, any interesting meaning. Okay, so we could go through uh, in each of those cases and as long as we are doing the calculations, always using these column totals in our denominator, uh, we'll be okay. The, the last one that I'll do is going to be here are our totals. And this one is actually relatively straightforward because these values are all the same. I have a bunch of nines, and here that denominator is 36. So all of these uh, totals are going to be 9 over 36 uh, and that's going to be 25 I guess we're going to multiply by 100 and that'll be 25 percent so these are all going to be 25 25 25 25 and finally 100 and so what this is telling us is that within my sample 25 percent are economists, 25% are accountants, 25% are engineers, 25% are physicists, and that accounts for 100% of my sample. Okay, so in this particular uh, exercise now where we're looking at these column percentages, it's telling us within each of those income groups what percentage are economists, what percentage our accountants, engineers, physicists. Within each of those columns, what percentage corresponds to each of our rows? Okay, uh, sorry this video went on uh, maybe a little bit long, but uh, 
lots here, lots here to cover. So I hope this makes sense. Uh, cross tabulations uh, shouldn't be exceedingly challenging, but they are a little bit tedious because there's a lot of very uh, small calculations and a lot of little, lots of room for mistakes because you know you don't want to get mixed up which cell you're working in. So take your time. Uh, the calculations shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be too difficult. Okay, thank you very much for watching.